everybody. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing good today. Who's doing good today? Come on, let me hear you. How many of you guys are excited to be in New Life today? Come on. Come on. Hey, look, glad to have you guys here. If, uh, if you're new here um, or you are back and you haven't been here for a while, my name is Jeff. And uh, it's a privilege to be here with you guys today. I'm one of the pastors on staff. Today, we are kicking off a brand new teaching series entitled Hope is Here. Hope is Here. How many people need some hope in their life? Come on. Right? Um, Look, this whole series is designed for you to invite friends. Okay? The whole series. Uh, Every single Sunday is designed for you to invite friends. We believe that uh, the hope uh, that we need to discover is the hope that Jesus provides. And we believe that we we live in a world that is desperately in need of hope. All right? And that's at all of our campuses. So I'm saying a big hello right now to Ogallala, North Platte, those worshiping with us online. Every single week at all of our campuses, it's a big invite Sunday. Uh, today, uh, today, we're talking about hope for the weary. Okay? Um, that's gonna, this is going to be an encouraging message for many of you. Next week, I'm going to talk about hope for the broken. And then hope for the underdog on September the 19th. And then hope for the doubter just to wrap up the series. And I'm asking you guys to be really strategic at all campuses, right, and invite people to join you. If you worship with us on our online campus, would you please, like, email or text a friend um, and invite them or Facebook, you know, uh, message them and invite them to be a part of our online campus as well. Um, if you attend the Carney campus, go out of your way, find a friend, invite them to be a part of what's going on. I want you to specifically consider uh, our big Sunday, September the 19th. We're joining with a nationwide effort uh, on September the 19th to make that the Back to Church Sunday. So invite your friends. We're going to have a big Sunday at all of our campuses here at New Life for September the 19th. As I'm going to talk about that week, hope for the underdog. So today, hope for the weary. You know, I I was just kind of evaluating the world that we live in right now. And I was considering the weight and the burden that some of you could be carrying um, in this world right now. Like with COVID and the pandemic that continues to impact our lives and it just keeps lingering and lingering. And then there's another variant and then they talk about another variant. And then you've got all these hate factions that are attempting to divide our country. You've got the vaccine and the no vacciners. You've got the mask and the no maskers that are pitting good people against each other. We have a highly politicized media that's spewing words of hate and stirring up division in our country today. We have a politicized immigration that's going on right now that's putting families, women, and children in dire situations. We have nations that are preparing for war against other nations right now. We have the pain of Afghanistan on our minds and weighing on the hearts of many of us, I know, right? And then last but not least, we have the threat of inflation that's invading, right, our take-home pay. And all of that is on top of the normal weight that you carry. So if you feel weary, you feel like there's a burden on you, you get tired, you feel wore out, I would say to you, wow, welcome to the norm. Welcome to the norm because we're not meant to carry all of that weight and then everything that we have. But church, for those of you who have put your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ, we cannot allow the weight that's happening in our world, in our nation, and the normal weight that you carry, we can never allow that weight to crush us. We have to maintain our hope in Jesus. If we, the church, aren't projecting a message of hope in a moment like this, then I would say this, that we are missing one of our greatest opportunities. But it reminds me about a story of a man who went to a Little League baseball game. He shows up to the baseball game, he's there early, he has his seat, he's got his popcorn, he's got his drink, and then the game kicks off. And he's watching the first team at bat, and they just keep knocking the ball, you know, out of the park. And they're just getting run after run, and eventually it gets midway in the first inning, right? And that team now has three outs, and the score is 16 to nothing. He's a little concerned for the team that's losing, so he walks up to the bench of the team that's losing, and he leans over, and he says, Hey, hey, little boy, son, son, are, are you discouraged, you know, by the score right now? Have you lost hope? And the little boy looked back at him somewhat puzzled, and he goes, No, why would I be discouraged? We haven't even been up to bat yet. And I'm like, that is the perfect 
attitude that the believers should have right now. That is what God has asked us to have in the face of everything that's going on in this world. Christians throughout history, by the way, have risen above the challenges because of the hope and the faith that we have in the promise of Jesus. And Jesus gave us this hope when he died on the cross, but then he walked back out of the tomb three days later. And it's because of what Jesus has done that Christians have risen above all of the issues that have been going on in this world for thousands of years now, risen above them. And church, it's our turn now. It's our time to rise above. And for those who have put their faith and their hope in Jesus Christ, and if you haven't, today I just want to let you know, you will be given the opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. But for those who have today, and all that are willing to say yes to Jesus, it's our turn, it's our generation. It might be the most difficult moment that you've ever lived in, but it's our time now to rise above and to be a messenger of hope in this world, and we can do it because of what Jesus offered. And when you look at the message of Jesus, and you look at the ministry of Jesus, everywhere he went, he offered hope. I mean, look, crippled people walked again. Blind eyes were opened. The hungry were fed. People that were living under oppression were given joy and a sense of peace. And then for all of us, transcending through the generations, the message of Jesus when he spoke about the kingdom of God and that there's life after death. There's something beyond this world. It doesn't matter what you're facing right now. It could be crushing, but there's life beyond this world everywhere that Jesus went. The entire message of Jesus was a message of hope. So the Bible is crystal clear on this issue. That, it, look, if Jesus is here, then hope is here. Amen? All right? Just, will you turn to somebody and just tell them, if Jesus is here, hope is here? Will you just tell them that really quick? If Jesus is here, hope is here. Come on. I, I, I think that... There's something about you saying it that your own ears hear it that's more powerful at times than even hearing it from me today. So we know all of this to be true, okay? But we also know that life is hard. I mean, how many people would testify to the fact that life's hard? <laughs> it's crazy. It just is. Life has a way of draining hope. It just drains hope, especially when you get weary, you get tired, you get wore out, right? Right? And many of us have experienced weariness in the past year and a half. How many of you guys would confess that you've experienced some level of weariness in the past year and a half? Would you guys just hold your hand up, right? Just keep it up. Would you look around the room for a moment? All right? Look at, the, look at this. I mean, there's a lot of people that have experienced some kind of weariness. Your weariness may have come from COVID and all the changes that, that came with that. It may have been waiting on a, on a health diagnosis that created this weariness, this tiresome, this this burden upon you. It could just be you trying to pay all your bills where the inflow and the outflow are not matching up correctly. Or maybe it's you trying to save your marriage. Or maybe it's you running a business or managing a department. Or maybe it's just you, single mom, who's trying to carry the weight of raising your children, working and, and dealing with self-care, right? And that the wearisome, the weight of that over time, it gets to you. Wearisome, when you get weary, Here's what happens, though. When you get weary, it leads to fatigue. Okay? And then fatigue causes you to want to give up. And this is not a person fueled with the hope of Christ. This is a person who's trying to grasp at life with the strength that is only within the human being. When you're weary, it brings fatigue. And fatigue causes you to want to give up. The famous NFL coach, Vince Lombardi, he said this one day, he goes, look, fatigue makes cowards of us all. No one's, no one's over the top of that. No one's better than that. But here's the good news. Jesus knew that we had a tendency to carry a heavy burden that was more than what we could really carry. And that it would cause us to lose hope at times. And so Jesus gave us this promise in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Read along with me to yourself on the screens. It says, look, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and I'm gentle at heart, and you will find, what? Rest for your souls. For my yoke, this is important, for my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden that I give you is, what? Light. I want to break this passage down just for a moment as we talk about 
How, how, can, how can there be hope for the weary? Well, first off, I, I want you to notice that Jesus acknowledged that life can be wearisome and it can be heavy. That life is going to have moments where you're going to feel a burden. It doesn't make you weak in your faith. It's what you do with it that will make you weak or strong in your faith. Life is going to have circumstances and situations that get weighty. And we need to know what to do with them. But the, this weight and this wearisome, it, it gets caused though by us. Because we run fast-paced lives with little margin. Right? When you run fast-paced life with little margin, it's going to catch up with you. How many of you guys have experienced that? Just nod at me. All right? All right. Just wink at me. All right. There we go. Okay. That way you don't have to give it away. All right? Well, the other reason why it gets caused, it gets caused by us because we're too hard on ourselves. Is there anybody else that would join me and say, that's who I am, Jeff? Because that's who I am. I set two, my expectations for myself are set so high that many times I don't make that. And then I get hard on myself. I'm creating my own problem. All right? And that's what we do for each other. That's what we're doing inside of ourselves. We create a lot of this wearisome and this burden and, and this weight that we carry. And it also comes from us just trying to keep up or to outperform the, the coworker or the neighbor or the friend. You hear a friend and a friend's talking about this next big thing that they're doing or they're buying or they're into or they're spending their time with. And you're like, man, I got to come. I got I to gotta catch up. And so you go and you get into something and then you hear from another friend and then you go more. And pretty soon, pretty soon your meter is pegged in the red and it's just out of control and you're just hitting the limiter all the time. And you're wondering, why am I wore out in this life? It's because over time you weren't meant to carry that kind of weight and it crushes you. And that, that's what happens. You start to get crushed by your burdens and we start to see ourselves as failures because we can't accomplish it all and we want to give up. But what does Jesus do in this passage? It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Jesus offers an invitation to every single person who's hearing my voice today. Anybody who's ever read Matthew chapter 11. He offers a standing invitation. Are your circumstances overwhelming you? Is the situation you're in like a burden you can't carry? Jesus says this, come to me. It's a standing invitation. Now, for many of you, you've given your life to Christ. You've surrendered your life to Christ. And I, and I applaud you for that. And continue on in that journey of what it means to let Jesus take more and more control. Because that's what this message is about. This message is not just for the person who needs to surrender their life to Christ. This is for the person who has, but yet is still trying to carry the weight of the world. And what Jesus is saying is this, like, uh, whatever it is in your life that's creating this weight, whatever zone of your life, whatever slice of pie that it is, Jesus is saying, bring that to me. Come to me with that. Whenever you feel overwhelmed, whenever you feel the weight of this world, whenever you feel tired, the standing invitation is always there. Jesus says, come to me. But what does he want to do when you come to him? He wants to offer you his exchange plan. He wants you to give him your wearisome, tired, and heavy burdens. And he wants to exchange it in this passage with something profound. Rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. You know, I don't know about you, but I love, I love stores that have an exchange plan. Right? An exchange policy. So when you buy that shirt, you know, and you bring it home and you put it on and you're like, it doesn't fit just right. You take it back or you mail it back. Right? And they'll give you another one. You buy a product and it's not exactly you know, what you thought it was and it doesn't work exactly the way. Then you can exchange it or you can even return it. And Jesus invites us to bring our weary and tired and wore out selves to him and exchange it for his rest. That's where you should have been on the inside. Wow, that's good news. How do I do that? Or why don't I do that more often? Why is it, are you serious? I got this exchange plan here and I'm not using it? You're just buying all of this like tired, wearisome, burden stuff and hanging on to it when you could have taken it back and exchanged it for something better? Why wouldn't you do that? Because we're all humans and we all like to stay in control. That's why. Because to exchange it means I have to give up control and watch, I have to take the yoke Jesus talked about the yoke 
of control from Christ. You're going to wear a yoke one way or the other. Okay, You're either controlling you or Jesus, and his yoke is going to control you. Think about it. Like a farmer used a yoke on, a, on an ox to control the ox and where it went. And Jesus says, look, you can exchange your yoke that's heavy, okay? You being in control that's making you wearisome, getting you tired, getting you wore out. You can exchange that for my yoke, which means you got to give up control and you have to let me be in control of that situation or of that circumstance. But you have to give up control to him. And many of us, we don't like that. But Jesus said this about his yoke, his control. It's light and it's easy. In fact, you can maybe even drive it home with, you know, juxtaposing his yoke with ours. His yoke invites us to trust him. And our yoke says, no, I'm going to trust in self. His yoke is centered on grace. Our yoke is centered on performance. His yoke is life-giving. Our yoke is often crushing. And so what does Jesus do? He invites us to exchange that heavy yoke for his yoke, which is easy and light and it gives rest. So I just got a question for you today. Right? Is your yoke crushing or is it life-giving? Today, right now, how do you feel? You know, you know when you go into the doctor's office and they go, look, on a scale of 1 to 10, where's your pain? And you always want to, to say something lower. Although there's times when you just want the attention. You're like, it's a 10 plus. And they're like, well, I'm going to call 911 and get the, get the ambulance over here. Well, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Maybe it's a 7. All right, so w- where are you at? Like, wh- wh- how would you rate the number? All right, is your, is your yoke crushing or is it life-giving? Where, where are you at on that? Are you, are you being controlled by a yoke that's crushing the joy and the peace of your heart, of your mind, of your thoughts? Or are you being controlled by the life-giving yoke of Jesus that's giving you rest, rest for your soul, that's taking the worry, it's, it's, it's exchanging worry for joy, it's taking the strife and it's exchanging strife for peace because that's what today, that's what Jesus is offering. He's offering a life-giving hope for the weary. I've experienced it in my life. I mean, within this past year and a half, I, I go back, back to last year, to the summer of last year when we weren't meeting here together. And it was just online. And I had to get up on this stage. I had to preach a message to cameras. And they were all moved in closer. And I'm trying to picture you out there. I went to one of my buddy's churches during that time just to, just to talk with him. And I walked into his auditorium. And he had pictures of people in the audience, like at the, at the, at the seats. And then... You know, I told that to a couple of people around here until so they went and made like cartoon drawings of people. And that was really distracting <laughs> because you guys had really big bubbly eyes and somebody had a real big nose and big lips. And that was, I just had to get rid of those. Like those, I couldn't, I couldn't preach to that. I was going to come up with different illustrations that weren't going to be good. And so uh, I remember that though. And it was taxing on me. I felt like everything when it comes to ministry and what God has called me to lead, which by the way, I take with like, I take it very serious, the role that God has asked me to serve in and the mission of serving the king. But I take it so serious at times that I take it upon myself, like I, can, like I control it, although it's not my attitude. But I find myself with my hands wrapped around it because I really want to like, protect it. I want to build it. I want it to be the best that it can be. And I want it to be, I do want it to be worshipped to God. But I felt it like it was all slipping through my fingers. And I found myself frustrated and even getting mad at God. I know none of you guys have ever been there. And then one day in my prayer, which probably sounded more like complaining to God, right? God met me, and God started changing everything. And I've told you before the vision. God gave me, so I'll give it to you quickly. God gave me a vision of my house. A tornado came through. It just took off half the house. There wasn't debris left, nothing. It was just gone. I walked up to the house. Half of it gone. The other half was perfect. Pictures are hanging on the walls. You know, pillows are still on the couches, right? It was just perfect. And I felt like right then the Holy Spirit whispered to me and he goes, Jeff, would you rebuild the house exactly the way that it was before? And instantly I said, no, Lord, I would have some new ideas. I would want that to be larger, the bedroom, or I would want this room to be different. I want the hall to, you know, and God said, right, 
Jeff, I just want you to know, that's what I want for my house. We're in the midst of COVID. We're not meeting together. And I sense the Holy Spirit whispering to my heart, I don't want you just to go and try to get back what you had. I don't want you to lead in a way that's just trying to hunger yourself back to this normal. I want you to get hungry for me, and I want you to hear what I want to do different in my house. And guys, that's how we've been trying to lead, and things continue to change. Even our kids' ministry, the whole aspect of our kids' ministry, we changed the whole thing. And it all came from that vision. I just want you to know, I came out of that moment of prayer, and like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. The team saw the weight lifted off my shoulders. My attitude was different. Why? Because I exchanged, right, me trying to hang on to it, weary, tired, getting wore out. I exchanged it that day for the vision of God and for what he spoke to me. And I walked out of that moment of prayer with hope in my heart. And the same thing can happen for you. So here's the good news. Right? If you're facing circumstances that you can't control, or maybe you're trying to lead through a very difficult situation, Jesus is here today like he met me in that moment of prayer. He's meeting you today, and he wants to exchange all of that for hope today. He wants to give some of you hope for tomorrow. That's what you're in need of right now. Others of you, it's maybe hope for a clear vision again, because you're lacking that. Others of you, maybe it's hope for a clean slate Maybe I can just get a fresh start here. And you're like, yes, God, that's the hope I need right now. Or maybe it's hope for peace and rest. I don't know what it is that you're looking for, but I know Jesus is here. And where Jesus is, there is hope. And he's inviting you to come and exchange whatever it is that's wearing you down. Whatever weight it is that you're carrying that you shouldn't be trying to carry alone. And he's asking you to come and exchange it for his hope today. Look, lastly, I just want to wrap up with this thought. I find it very interesting that Jesus used the illustration of a yoke. Because the illustration of a yoke is a, is a very interesting one because it, it binds two animals together. And the two animals now have to work in unison to accomplish something, maybe even accomplish something greater than what one animal alone could have done. And in that picture, one animal is picking up some of the weight of another one. And I, I, just, I just sense that Jesus in this example, he's driving this home for you and me who are the church. And he's basically saying to us that the church is designed to carry one another's burdens. So we give up our individual yoke that's wearisome and tiresome. We take on his yoke, which demands that we be connected with the local church and with other believers. So that we can do what he designed us to do. He already put it inside of you. To help carry each other's burdens. To help carry the weight for one another. To walk with each other through difficult times. The Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in, Gal in Galatia. Um, and he wrote it even to us today. In Galatians 6 he says, look, share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. Did you realize that when you're sharing someone else's burden that you're actually obeying the law of Christ. And then watch what it says in the next verse. If you think that you're too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. Basically, he's saying this to every single one of you. Every single person who calls themselves a Christ follower has a mission. You're not too important to help someone else. Every single person is supposed to be involved in carrying the burden with another believer. Every single one of you. And no one's left out. You don't get to opt out of this one. You don't, if you opt out of it, basically he comes to you and he shuns you with these words. You're not as important as you think you are. And this is the message of hope from Christ. That you're not alone. And that we're to carry each other's burdens. And I think it's very fitting that this is a week that out in our lobbies, at our campuses, we're helping to now promote our life groups that are getting ready to launch this month. You're not to do life alone. God's word drives it home. It says that you basically were designed to help carry one another's burdens because we get yoked in Christ with other believers. Join a life group. Right? You're not that important. You're not that good. You can't do life alone. You'll never be as good alone as you will be with other believers. You will never succeed alone. 
in this mission of Christianity. You were designed to do it with others. If you try to do it alone, then when you come into my office, or you come into Pastor Nate's office, and you, and you start listing out all of the weight that you're carrying, the, ver- the first thing you're going to hear us say is this, are you in a life group? No. The next time that you say, well, pastor, I was in the hospital for all these days and no one even came to visit me. And we're going to say back to you, were you in a life group? Well, pastor, my family was going through a difficult situation and it's like no one even cared about me. And we're going to say back to you first and foremost, are you in a life group? That's going to be our first response. It's not because we want to be harsh. It's because right here, right now, if you think that you're too important to be a part of someone else's life, you're only fooling yourself. It's right there. And you're not that important. So jump in. Be a part. It's what God called you to do to help you carry your weight, and you now get the joy of helping carry others' weights. So when you're in the mix of other people, burdens come in all different shapes and sizes. Some of them are inflict, some of them are like self-inflicted. And they're difficult. And at times you want to judge people because you're like, man, I can't believe that you know you did that. But what can a believer do? How can we help carry the burdens of a self-inflicted, you know, burden upon a person? We we can do this. We can offer grace. We can offer forgiveness. And if you are given the opportunity, you can let your voice speak a voice of wisdom to someone to help them toward a better way. How about when you're dealing with like the burden of someone that is living in an unexpected situation? Like they, they didn't plan on it. It just happened. It happens to all of us. What can the believer do with another believer? Well, we can, be, we can just become a good listener. Just listen. Sometimes the greatest thing you can do for a person is just let them share their story. And have compassion and empathy with them. You know what? If you're in a life group and you find that there's a need or you hear about a need, bring a meal. Or maybe what you can also do is just you can help meet needs financially. There's things that we can do when unexpected things happen. And by the way, you're, if you're a kingdom builder, you, did you realize that you are, you're a part of this right now? We had a kingdom builder partner that had a devastating fire in their house. And he is a missionary to the inner, inner city schools in Omaha. And we came along as a church and we said, we want to help you guys out. We want to help meet some of those needs. And if you're a kingdom builder, did you realize that we gave them $5,000 and we said, would you make, and they have seven foster kids in their house, would you make those seven foster kids' bedrooms, would you, would you Disneyfy them, basically? That was the new word we came up with. Make them like Disneyland, right? Make them amazing. And we want, we want, when you move back into that house, which by the way, they had to tear down every wall in that house back to the studs. Right, and then start from scratch. The ceilings, everything. All you saw was there was like a studded house, and it all got rebuilt on every level, on on all the floors. And they're getting really, really close to moving back into that house. And if you're a kingdom builder, man, you came alongside and you helped carry the burden for others because of your kingdom builder generosity. I am so proud of you, uh, New Life, for the generosity that you share through kingdom builders. Way to go! Way to go! But here's the truth. When you help carry the burden of another person, guess what you're doing? You are bringing hope. This is what the world needs to see right now. The world needs to see believers that are full of the hope of Jesus sharing that hope with others. So when you invite your friends over this month, and especially on, the, on September the 19th, when you invite your friends, you're inviting them to hear a message of hope. Why? Because Jesus is here. When we meet together, he's here with us. And you're going to invite them right into an opportunity to experience the hope of Jesus. So as I close, if you're weary and you're burdened, you can find rest today in Jesus. Uh, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to walk through it alone. You have to carry it alone. We can do this together. Hope can start for you today, but here's how hope begins. Hope begins by surrendering the circumstances and the situation that are they're ca- creating the weight to God today. Hope begins when you exchange the weight that you're carrying for the yoke of Jesus. That's when hope can begin. Hope begins today when you humble yourself and maybe you just tell someone else, this is the weight that I'm carrying. And you don't even have to ask them for anything. Just let them know, this is the weight I'm carrying. 
so they can be praying with you, supporting you. It's amazing how a little text message at the right moment from the right person can be such an amazing encouragement to you. So today at all of our campuses, the altars are for the hungry. That's, what, that's one of the, the things that we believe here at New Life. The altars are for the hungry. So listen to me at all of our campuses. I want you to come to the front and I want you to stand at the altars in worship today. As we move into this time of response, if you're carrying a weight that's greater than what you want to carry, if you're sensing a burden that's more than what you want to carry, if you're starting to feel tired, you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you've got a situation or some circumstances that are more than what you are designed to carry by yourself, I want to encourage you at all of our campuses to come to the front during our worship and stand for a while in worship. You don't have to stand up here forever because, look, you're not going to stand alone. But by coming out of your seat, you're going, look, guys, I'm here, and I'm just, wanting, I'm just wanting to surrender more of myself to Jesus. I'm hungry for more of God in my life. And what you're going to find at all of our campuses is that you're not going to stand alone. Someone from our church is going to come down, and they're going to be praying with you. You might sense a hand put on your shoulder. Someone might come right in front of you and just pray for you. And that will be what you need today. The encouragement from other believers and the encouragement that can come from Christ. So don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Won't, don't walk out of here and don't walk out of North Platte and Ogallala with the same weight that you walked in. Lay it down at the altar. Come and stand and let some other believers come and pray with you. Why don't you stand with me and let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the hope that we have in Christ. Lord, I thank you that even you recognize that this life is difficult and that we are prone to carry more than we were designed to carry. So you gave us an exchange uh, policy, a guarantee that if we come and we give you our weary and our tiredness and our wore out and where we feel burdened, that you will help exchange that for a rest in our souls. And I pray you do that today in Jesus' name. That Lord, wherever you are, hope is there. And we know you are here. Where two or more are gathered in your name, you are here. And at all of our campuses, Lord, you are there. And so this church can respond with confidence. And they can come and they can stand at our altars. And they can raise their hands to you and they can worship you. Knowing that they're coming to the, to the source of hope, Jesus. And they're bringing, they're bringing the weight and they're dropping it off at the altar. And exchanging it for the rest that only you can provide. So, Lord, may people find freedom in your house today. May they find hope for the weary. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.